Hi guys, this is Jimmy from Chaos Group and we have just released the third service pack of V-Ray 2.0 for 3D Studio Max. Like all service packs that we release, this one comes free and is full with all kinds of improvements and fixes. To see the full list of changes you can check the change log, but in this video I want to show you a couple of improvements that we added to V-Ray RT. As you know, V-Ray RT is our interactive rendering engine uh, that you can use uh, to speed up the shading and lighting stages of your workflow. And uh, it's very powerful because it can run both on CPUs and GPUs. And when running on GPUs, V-Ray RT used to only use OpenCL. Now, OpenCL is a platform that allows us to run V-Ray RT on any kind of GPU that supports OpenCL, and we are not restricted to only using it on CUDA. And this is a, a very uh, useful approach because this actually uh, allows our users to use whatever graphics card they want as long as the device supports OpenCL. Uh, in the new service pack, we have introduced a new engine to the V-Ray RT called CUDA, which as its name suggests, only runs on CUDA-enabled graphics cards, uh, but uh, it will introduce a great deal of uh, stability and uh, improvements in terms of speed to all of the users who have uh, CUDA-enabled devices. So let's switch to CUDA and uh, see the performance. Just going to click Active Shade. And in this scene, uh, we have a model that you've probably seen before if, you, uh, if you're a regular viewer to our channel. Uh, but uh, I want to be able to just to show you the performance and uh, the, the speed that you can expect when running V-Ray RT on CUDA. So we have the standard DOI setup and you can use V-Ray RT obviously to do anything uh, that you could do in the past. This time, the only difference again is that I'm using um, a different engine which only runs on CUDA. So for example, let's uh, adjust the lighting a little bit and make more of a sunset type of um, illumination in my scene. And I can also play with the shaders if I want to. So let's move in on a little bit and uh, pick a better view. Okay, so uh, of course, like all the other engines, the CUDA engine will also support uh, complex shading. So if we pick uh, the shader for this, um, um, not the tire, but the rim over here, you'll see that this actually uses the V-Ray blend material and I'm using it to blend two different uh, materials. So my base material is a simple metallic uh, surface. I don't have any diffuse. I have blurry reflections, so I have reduced the glossiness and I also have this gray color for reflections. And if I pick it and start to change it, you'll see that uh, this immediately affects the shader and I get this very quick preview so I can very easily set up the shader this way. I can also uh, move up and the cop ma material is just a simple reflective material. The interesting thing here is that I'm using a texture to blend the two materials. So if I enable this texture, click on it and uh, play a little bit with this curve, I'm going to change the blending come out here and I'm going to change the final look of the of the shader so I can make it more reflective and I can see more of the um, uh, of the top material of the coat material and this is also true for example for my uh, car paint shader here that I'm using uh, this is again using a blend material so if I zoom in here uh, and select the color for the reflections I can change the whole color of the car and you see that uh, I really get this nice um, nice fast preview which uh, uh, is actually the same thing that is going to be rendered using the standard uh, rendering engine. And uh, so this is uh, the CUDA engine. And another cool thing that we added is, uh, I'm going to show it to you now, but just going to stop the active shade for a second. So what I want to point out here is that uh, I have this, uh, actually this is a part of an animation. And if we bring uh, out the production settings, you see that uh, in the camera overrides, I have enabled motion board. So I've set up the motion board already. And I'm going to go back to Active Shade, click RT, and then you see that we have this checkbox which says Motion Blur. So I'm going to enable it here and click Active Shade. Now what this will do is, you, as you can imagine, I'm going to render uh, the image out with Motion Blur enabled. So this is the new thing, it's actually the ability to render Motion Blur using, um, using V-Ray RT. And of course I'll get pretty much the same performance here. Uh, just a little bit uh, sore because of the heavy motion board that we have, but you can see that uh, I can go on and uh, pick, for example, the perfect position for a shot. Or well, maybe not this one, maybe this one. And uh, if I leave it like this uh, for a couple of seconds, Vira is going to work on it. My graphics cards are going to get really uh, heavily loaded, but it's going to clear out the image and produce a very, very high, high quality image. So uh, these are pretty much the things that I wanted to show you. Uh, as you can see, we have um, 
greatly improved the V-Ray RT and you also have a bunch of different improvements as I told you already you can check the change log and see those so I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, until next time I'm Dimitri Krestev Jimmy and I thank you for watching